Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> welcome back, I guess, for those of you who um, are, are paying attention here. Um, you know, the season's already over. I've, I've used up all my lift. I was going to show, uh, make the video, but I didn't really feel like doing it. And not to mention, it was also, like, very easy these last two matches just because I'm, you know... The fact that there's a tier 28 means that um, everything else got pushed down. So I'm fighting like tier 25, tier 26 people in tier 27 to get into tier 27. So those matches weren't very interesting. I didn't think anyway. I mean, uh, let's see if we can go find. Ah, well, this is what I was going to show anyway. I have three, three, three ladders left is how bad that was. Um, in terms of like how easily um, <laughs> we beat those. Uh, the last, I actually had three matches and I perfected all three of them. Right off the bat, like on the first try, I didn't have to use a scab ladder or anything like that. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, we're making a video on, on Aether Raid, specifically my defense, uh, how it's doing, uh, thoughts going forward, and, and all that stuff. And um, before we go ahead uh, and get into any of that, any more of that, uh, I want to say how interesting it was. Like, part of me, uh, I mentioned in, in one of the videos earlier that, like, Acarus has been missing for a while. And then <laughs> as soon as I, that my video, like, around the time my video comes out, saying that and I hadn't been making videos in a while either right but like as soon as I come back to make a video uh he came back and, and started talking about that stuff so um I just thought it was kind of interesting I don't know what to glean from that um considering like no one I'm not gonna say oh it was because of me I mean no one you know no, no one other than you guys watches this channel and there's only um a handful of you and I don't think like Acarus is the kind of what's the word I don't know if, if you want to say pontific, I feel like would be a good word to describe him. He kind of talks down to everybody. Uh, so, like, someone, you know, down here at this level, he's not going to care. <laughs> like, he honestly, he wouldn't care. Um, but the, the, the main point of that is that uh, he came back and he, he said a few things, and I, and I want to kind of address a few of those things that he, he mentioned. Um, because they, they mirror exactly what I had been saying earlier, was that Cavline is becoming more and more dominant and, and being more and more prevalent with strategy. Um, specifically because of like what he said and what we all kind of know, you can't get away with just having your team turtle up there and then let them kind of have to fight into you. You really need to have your defense be active, and that's been there since like forever. It's why Cavline has been a thing since Cavline's been a thing. Cavline relies off of just being able to snipe somebody, at least one person, and then either they leave or they don't, and then they start taking more losses. And you might end, a lot of times Cavlines end up losing. Um, because the Cavs can't really sustain a victory, but they can get enough um, collateral damage on the rest of your team that you either leave because you don't want to take the lift loss, um, or I mean that that's about it really. Like you can you can beat a Cav line. Cav lines are 100% beatable by everything. Uh, they're just not 100%able by every team because you're gonna lose units. Now, given the fact that we can lose an extra unit on on uh, on offense on Astra or not on on Astra, when whenever we have the bonus unit, I think right is that. I think that's what it, that is. Uh, well, I, don't, I think it might just be Astrum. But now that we have ability to lose an extra unit, it's still like... There's no other team that can do that. And the only person, and funnily enough, the only team that is second to that in terms of like... Ability to get into your backline and start sniping something is going to be um, flyers, right? The flyer movement, the, the flyer formation, all that stuff. Makes their movement tricky and it's kind of hard to position your stuff around if you block off certain uh, walkways and all that stuff. And we'll talk about how my uh, Flyer Emblem works and, and all that stuff. Um, but I want to talk about going forward into uh, AR tier 30 whatever end up, right? We're going to see, we're probably going to start seeing a lot more Cav lines. And if not 100% Cav lines, we're probably going to start just seeing more Cavs in general. So we're probably going to start seeing people just throwing their Leafs on defense or throwing... Um, Veronica's on defense or just like you have like a certain team and you just throw that on there and and you know just hope for the best from there um which I think I mean like I said it, it's what I had said before he had made that video so I'm, I'm glad that he waited till after I had said that um I don't think that the game is going to become a horse emblem right cab emblem now you know I don't think it's gonna become that because there's always gonna be people who want to do what they want to do like take me for example uh if the I'm I generally have like the lowest opinion of anybody who uses a cav line like they're you know they're the lowest of the low to me they're basically you know scum to me um and you'll you'll never see me use one and if it comes to the day where i'm forced to use one like to stay competitive then that's probably going to be the day where i'm just gonna like not play anymore um 
because I'd rather not play than play a game where Horse Emblem or Cav Emblem is is the only strategy. Right now, it's it's a pretty dominant strategy. I won't lie or deny any of that stuff. It, it's a pretty dominant strategy, but it's not the only strategy. Uh, you can do stuff to sort of mitigate that. But um, I want to kind of call back to the video um, Acris made, uh, it, kind of talking about the new what, what we should be doing going forward. Um, what was I? I forgot what the point was that I was going to make there. Um, but he mentioned one of the things where it's like, he, he one of the things that I found most interesting was that he said, you need to have a more aggressive team comp. And, and like I just said, there's nothing more aggressive than the Cav line. So we kind of both said the same thing where we're reiterating, I'm reiterating now that like Cav line is the one that does that aggressive play style of just get in there and start wreaking damage. Uh, the most aggressively and the most successfully. Like, there's no other, there's no other team that can do what Cavline does in 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 that space. Flyer Flyer Emblem is kind of a close second because, uh, like I said, the flyer formation and all that stuff. But I think it. I I found it quite odd that in the video he kind of danced around it. Like he didn't say. He he didn't want to say. Oh, you have to go. You, you have to go Cavline now, but he may as well have. Right. There was. There's nothing really that can do what any of these teams need to be doing without running calves. Um, and I don't really know, like, I guess going forward, like, how, how do you fix that, right, is the question. Because you're not going to nerf calves at all because they're already kind of hard to use in any other game type aside from Aether Raids. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to nerf them because, especially because uh, Faye doesn't nerf anything, right? So that's kind of one of the interesting things about this game is that They've had such good balance that they've never had it to nerf anything, which I find kind of interesting. At least, I don't, at least to my knowledge, they might have nerfed some unit somewhere in year one, but uh, since then, maybe you know, even even if that, they haven't done it at all. So um, I think that, that that's a good testament to the balance that they've had. But um, like I said, do I think they should nerf horses? I don't think they should, but I, I certainly do think that they need to capitalize more on the structures. We've had the same structures in game since. You know, since Aether Raids has been around, they've just been upgraded here and there, right? And that, that's fine and all, but there needs to be better and more interesting structures going on. And maybe even, you know, map layouts need to change a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what needs to be done. I don't know if anything does need to be done. I mean, a lot of people probably just like the game the way it is, and, and that's fine. Um, but if the game keeps spiraling towards, um, you know, Cavline, then I think no one's going to enjoy that. And, you know, because, I mean, you look at Tacho, you look at, um, you look at Tacho, you look at, uh, what's his name? Uh, Phoenix Master 1. Well, actually, I'm not entirely sure. I think the, I think I saw he had a Cavalry, I'm not entirely sure. But, like, Acarus, like, all these people who are at the top echelons of, of, well, not even, they're not even at the top top, right? Because people at the actual top, like, place 1 through 10 or 1 through, like, 100, those guys are whales, right? But even putting them aside, some of like the better, more prominent YouTubers and people who like display content for this stuff, they're all running cav lines and they're all just telling you to run cav lines. And Acarus wants to dance around the issue because he doesn't want to promote the idea that cav line is the only um, the only end game defense, uh, which I don't want to promote either. I don't think that's the case, but it's getting there. It, it's just like, you know, he didn't want to say it, but that's basically what he's saying. You need something more aggressive and the only thing more aggressive is cav line. Um, but like, like I said, so that's kind of the stuff I wanted to talk about that going forward into tier 30, 30 and up above. I made it to tier 27. I think I should be getting into tier, into the Heaven's Gate or whatever, unless it's till next season. I'm not entirely sure. But I can make, consistently make it up to tier 27, so there's that. Will I be able to stay up there every season? Because you have to make it to tier 38, right, to stay there. And I don't think that's going to be possible uh, with this account, but we'll see how that goes. Especially, I'm having a little more confidence going forward, especially because um, I don't have to pull for anything anymore, like... All I can, all I need to save my orbs for is pulling on um, more mythic merges and just a few skills here and there. Like I'll still need a spurn at some point. Um, what was the other skills that I need? Oh, I need Pegasus Flight and Wyvern Flight. Those are pretty good skills. Uh, so there's some skills here and there I got to pull for, but you know, chances are I'll probably get them here or there eventually, just like off a random pull. Uh, and that just means I got to save my my orbs to. Um, to get more mythic merges and then you know i should be fine after a while um but we'll see how we'll see how things go it's just you know just a heads up going forward for those of you who are um you know it's gonna get a lot harder we're gonna find we're gonna end up finding against a lot more cav lines um and what else yeah i mean if you're gonna if you don't have a cav line you're gonna have a really hard time um 
going forward in ether raids is the bottom line uh, so now that all that stuff's out of the way we, we've talked about um Acris's video and, and and what the thoughts are going forward um i think uh let's go take a look at my defense we'll i haven't showed this defense i don't think i've showed this new defense yet um yeah i don't think i've showed this new defense yet uh, exactly the way it is i you know most of the stuff is there from you know previous but kind of talk about how this is and we'll go over my defense replays and see what's going on there and see how that how my theory of, of the way this should play out or the way I want it to play out compares to how it's actually playing out um, week to week. So we'll, we'll go look at that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so here's my here's my team. Um, for those of you who know, my Camilla has is a plus 10, obviously, but my Camilla has gone through a lot of changes. So I had Fortress Defense Res on her. I had the Fury. So I had a lot of stuff on her. Uh, but ultimately, I decided that uh, to go with distant counter because she has a she has a pretty good ability to just kill people a lot of the time. So like take Leaf for example. If Leaf runs into her, um, he'll just die. Like you can't Leaf Camilla. She's she, she just gonna die. Is the is the thing with that right? Uh, the other thing that's pretty good right is the fact that we have um, Minerva. So Leaf is a big problem for flyer balls. Always he's always going to be there for that. Uh, but now thanks to the way I've set up my team, we have Camilla here who can retaliate on a leaf and then just kill him. So that's kind of, you know, that's good to have that safety there. Uh, which, funnily enough, I've been thinking about running, and we'll see more of that as we as we go further. But uh, yeah, so she, she has this if she can't for some reason. And, and, you know, there's really nothing else to put on her except for guard bearing, which I do have one copy of. Um, and I might actually have to start using guard bearing on her. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see going forward. I, I, it, I only have one Ingrid left, and I really don't want to waste it um, without really knowing for sure if that's what I have to do. Um, but yeah, so, you know, guard, either I'm going to either run guard bearing or which going to be the likely case for me, I think, is going to be Pegasus Flight. Because um, Pegasus Flight drops their attack by 7, which is pretty good because that's a lot better than like 50% damage reduction in some cases, right? There's a 50, 50 of like percentage damage and um, just reducing it flat out. Right? Like take a lull, a lull. If someone hits you for 10 damage, which a lot of times when you have a tankier unit like Camilla, she's not going to take more than like 10 damage at a time, 20 damage. Um, a lull drops it by three damage, right? Three attack reduces their attack by three. So you're re essentially reducing the damage you take by 30%. Whereas like, you know, if, you, if we're taking the Wyvern Flight, she's reducing it by a whole 70% as opposed to like the 50% or whatever. Now, that's not exactly... Um, the 50% is always going to be there no matter what, and it's going to increase the more damage she takes, which is obviously kind of what you want, right? Or the flat won't. And, and that, you know, there's a whole debate on flat versus percentage and all that stuff, and, you know, we can get into that another time. But for now, like I said, the, the two things I'm, I'm considering are the Guard Bearing or um, Pegasus Flight. I like Pegasus Flight because it's not just reliant on one combat, like... Guard bear like uh, Pegasus Flight can work no matter what, and it's always not only is it an, a defensive reduction of attack by seven, it's also a defensive reduction by a defense reduced by seven, and you know makes it easier for her to kill people. Um, some people don't actually know the understand the wording on Pegasus Flight or uh, Wyvern Flight. the The bottom line it is that you can be ten speed slower than the person who's fighting with you, and then you get the buffs based on um, res or defense. So in Camilla's case. She has a pretty high rest stat, 35, 37, plus the 5 from her is uh, 42. Uh, so the bottom line is, if she's 10 slower at least, now granted, she can be she can be faster and it'll still work, but they have to at least be like within 10 speed of them, even if it's slower. Um, then you can make that speed, then, you know, she's pretty good because she's also got, you know, flyer formation, uh, goat flyers here, and that's about that. Uh, plus, she's got this, so yeah, increasing her survivability a little more. Um, but yeah, so that's what Camilla's job is here. The one of the other, the only other thing I'm thinking about doing is switching her over to. Um, sorry about that. Um, switching her over to a distant foil. Now, distant foil is not as useful because um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of mages, and you you want to fight these mages, but. One of the things that's, that's getting sort of <laughs> prominent now is we have to worry about, um, what's her name? 
we have to worry about Regan, and Regan can just one shot Camilla if she doesn't have enough defense. And this Camilla here has been one shot, as we'll see in some of the replays. Uh, and the whole team kind of falls apart because, like I've said in earlier videos, she's kind of the anchor. Like everything moves around her, everything kind of flows around her as being the anchor of of this whole positioning. Uh, so once she's gone, we we lose a lot of range, we lose a lot of uh, positioning, we lose a lot of uh, we lose not only that, but we lose the uh, the attack speed range, and we also lose the Camilla bonuses from this. There's another attack, another plus three. Uh, so. I really need to figure out how to counter Regan with Camilla. Now, this would be easier for those of you who have uh, Sateth, I think is his name. Let's go over here. Sateth just kind of solves that answer of having your anchor be... Uh, do everything that Camilla does, but better. And again, it's the same thing with Ashnard, where th both of those choices are excellent choices to just have here to fulfill the same roles. However, I don't really care for either of them, so I'm not going to use them, is basically the bottom line. Uh, let's go take a look at Sateth here. So Teth has this, which gives him more speed, so he's going to have more speed than Camilla at the end of the day, uh, at a plus 10, so we're assuming plus 10 here. Uh, but if you're within two spaces of an ally, any ally, and you can use this on, on you know, non-flyer balls, but mainly we're talking about flyer balls because he's a flyer. Uh, he gives them all plus, attack, plus 4 attack and speed, where Camilla's axe only gives everybody plus 3. Uh, so not only that, so he's already better in that sense, like at a bottom line, right? So let's go back to, if I can find him. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Oh, there he is. Not that one, that one. So not only that, and he neutralizes... Oh no, that's himself. Okay, sorry. That's... So if he's 2 from an ally, he gains plus 4 attack and speed, uh, and then he neutralizes their bonuses, which is excellent, right? So you don't have to worry about um, buffs or debuffs, or, well, you have to worry about debuffs, but you don't have to worry about buffs, right? So that's pretty perfect. Uh, and then here's the other part where you get uh, everybody, everybody gets uh, plus 4 attack speed. So... Your he his 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 self buffing effect is matching Camilla's, and then his teammate buffing effect is beating Camilla's, and then on top of that he also has a a, a buff negation thing on his on his S one. On top of the fact that he's he was a he was a um, a four star from the banner he came out in, so you could easily plus ten him, and I think I've gotten a few copies of him myself. But like I said, I'm not gonna build him because I really don't care. Um, and Ashnard could obviously be another um, another addition. Um, so yeah, so let's go back again. Like I said, this is this is a problem that's easily solved by switching units out, and due to the fact I'm stubborn and I don't want to do that, um, this is what we're kind of, where we're at. Um, but yeah, other than that, she does pretty well against most things, other than one thing that's starting to crop up a lot more, and it's starting to get on my nerves, uh, how much it's actually, uh, how strong it is, but we'll get to that. Um, so in terms of leaf proofing, she's basically solid she can kill leaf no matter what especially with all the buffs and debuffs and all that stuff uh the other weak link is if leaf, leaf stands here he can snipe her uh of course she's not gonna that's nothing's gonna happen to her because not only does she get plus four to her all her stats she's at 48 defense which is pretty good um not to mention i want to get wyvern flight on her at some point which i might it, it, it's gonna be hard to decide whether i want wyvern flight or to keep the flyer formation but we'll see how that goes uh, so if she has Wyvern Flight, she reduces their attack by another 7, and, you know, that's pretty good. Um, Dragon Axe, blah, 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 and she gives him charge minus 1. So even if she doesn't kill him, which she probably won't because she doesn't have counter, uh, distant counter, right? Uh, he won't be able to charge his special off her, so he won't be able to leave so easily, which is just, you know, that's kind of the point, right? So you either need to kill him in, Ca in Camilla's case, or make sure he can't charge his special in uh, Minerva's case, and he can't leave. Uh, I really hope they change this to make it so that, like, just to make it an easier thing, because it's kind of easy to just not have 100% HP and then not deal with it. Uh, but anyway. Um, so let's kind of go through what, what's going on with her. She's got, I gave her this because, like I said, Camilla needs to be able to fight people sometimes, so she needs to have a little more oomph. Uh, but it's also to help uh, increase her attack and speed, right? Because she'll be, like, if she attacks here... She'll still get the bonuses from her, or if she if she fly formations here, she'll still get the bonuses or here, right? Right. So on first turn, when she attack, when um, Byleth attacks, she'll get the attack speed plus four from here. Uh, you can see over there I have the attack speed two in the uh, special slot or the the, the sacred slot. Uh, that's here to boost her attack, but mainly her speed. I could give her the 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 plus speed three or whatever, and then give her you know one extra speed point. Mainly the point of that is uh, to outspeed Byleth, right? So that uh, when someone hits you, when they're running with like chills and stuff, 
uh, Minerva will soak that chill. However, it's kind of useless because um, Plumeria is on offense. So, you know, it means that <laughs> she can just debuff the whole team by seven. So, not ideal, mind you, but uh, better than nothing. Um, I might end up just taking that off of her because I didn't think about that at the time and I realized how stupid that was. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll see how we we'll have, to, have to think about how we work around that. But in, in terms of now, that's kind of what the idea is. Um, what else? Ignis is here because she needs, you know, all the damage she can get. Uh, and then she has Iceberg because she, the, the, the three cooldown is very good on these two tanky units to brawl. Uh, especially like the Iceberg on her because, um, like you just need the three. So when Leaf comes in, he hits you twice, which reduces it to one. Camilla hits back because she can outspeed. So she hits back, it's ready, and then she hits back again because she can double. And the double will have the uh, iceberg charge. So he'll just die no matter what, right? That's kind of the idea there. Um, so that's that's these two. Uh, as you saw before, one of my biggest problems, I didn't have red checks, but now I do. So we're basically solid. I don't lose, I don't lose to greens anymore. This is pretty awesome. Um, so we have Pala here. Now, Pala used to have the, uh, hardy bearing on her because she was the only hardy bearing unit I had. Um, but there's no need for that anymore. So, you know, I gave her a, uh, heavy blade. Why the heavy blade specifically? The heavy blade is here because, um, what's his name? Vectors. Uh, with the heavy blade, she can kill Vector, uh, because she can charge her special because vectors now are i mean they, they've kind of always been able to but now it's more beneficial than than ever to run um special spiral so if she hits vector she'll never get her special off but now with heavy blade the heavy blade negates the um the special uh reduction of special special fighter so she can get through that now normally uh, on someone who doesn't have that She'll hit once, and then, because she can attack twice, because you have a flyer ball, she can attack twice, so, before they even retaliate. So she hits twice, the second hit will have the moon bow charged. Uh, against Vector, that's not the case, so she has to hit, get those two hits, survive a counterattack from Vector, and then get another hit, and she'll get the moon bow, plus whatever other damage she gets after that. Uh, it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say. Uh, she's got moon bow drawback. Now, these two have reposition. So that if like she gets over here, um, Camilla can just like reposition her behind her or something like that. Like you know, presumably she's not there, and then she can reposition or whatever. So these two have reposition to get your units behind them. Uh, these have drawbacks so that you can get your tanky units, being these three, uh, and then just hold them and then back them up with her so that they can keep protecting them. Um, but uh, yeah, what else? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I guess I'll go over a lot of these things. Um, Pala can be easily replaced with either. Um, like Est can be replaced by um, who else? There's that one uh, Tokyo Mirage Session character. I forgot what her name. I think it's Tsubasa. She's a pretty good um, viable unit for that as well. Uh, just a really hard hitting uh, blue lance unit is what you need here. Now I chose Pala because I got a bunch of copies of her. Not only that, she's also a dual character, which means I can use Duel's Hindrance. Uh, now I have Bylas. It's not as important, but still, she's like the best blue lance like nuker that i have on my uh <laughs> in my box so that's why she's here um obviously i i kept this uh mirror impact on her just because she doesn't need speed so she doesn't need like a uh a, a swiss sparrow three and it, it helps even out her res right so she has uh thir 24 res and then now she has 34 so she's basically 34 and 34 plus whatever uh, non-visible buffs we get from the rest of the team um and that's just kind of uh to feed my like <laughs> constant need for um having stats be even so like like as you can see here uh 37 and 37 and then you know 34 and 30, 34 and 34 theoretically uh so yeah that's that's what's up with that i mean there's not a whole lot, whole lot else to say there um it also makes it just she just makes it easier to, to kill things that are mages as well if they try to hit back like you know mages or or dragons or something like that um but yeah like for those of you who don't know how the spear works, uh, if you have three or more flyers anywhere on the team, they don't have to be near her or anything. If she has three or more, she reduces their attack by four, which is pretty good because it also helps you get the you know the heavy blade condition. Uh, and then she reduces their defense by four, as well as uh, it gives her a free follow up attack, right? So now she can you know so now she can double. However, if you have her on a flyer ball, which means that she'll have flyers around her, 
uh, at least two flyers around her most of the time, especially if you're running flyer uh, flyer formation, uh, she can, in fact, uh, double a uh, quad. I mean, so each attack counts as two attacks. So she, she, yeah, she attacks twice. <laughs> it's hard to go so roundabout there. Oh, yeah, so if she, if she attacks, she attacks twice, so she can quad. Now, the only thing... Uh, I really wish I could do is give her dive bomb, but I think like the mo the movement from flyer formation is far too important, especially like I said, in this current meta where you need a lot of movement, you need a lot of like just get our units out there and start wreaking havoc. Um, right, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I mean it basically means that anyone who sits here has to either has to get hit by everything here. Like th this position is supposed to be hard to kill because it's a it's a fortified position. But it's also a kill box because everybody has range on you and, and the, the chances of you being able to survive um, green, like these green hard hitters or a red, you know, a red nuker or a, um, a blue nuker like this is going to be really hard to uh, ask for any unit. So that's kind of the idea. Um, so yeah, let's go over here. So this is a new addition. Uh, for those of you who saw my summoning session, uh, we got a plus six on her. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a whole lot else to say. One of the things that is different from her than other people is you want to have the highest attack you possibly can uh so that she can just one shot on the on the counter because she has vantage built in at, at no matter what the health threshold is so you just want her to be able to to one shot anybody who hits her mainly being leaf right so leaf can't fight leaf can't come up here and just snipe you know Sheeta because she'll just counter attack and hit him with a one shot because uh, he is a, a bow user and and she has effective damage on bow users so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah, so for those of you who don't know, she has pretty high attack. She's effective against uh, a lot of stuff, not colored bows though, so yeah, and uh, calves as well. Uh, unless, you know, well, no, yeah, not colored bows unless they're like mages. Mages is the only thing that kind of counters her, uh, but that's all right. Uh, what else? Yeah, so if, if any of these that she's effective against fights her, uh, she has vantage. And even if, and then she has normal vantage if she has, you know, she has normal vantage, plus she can vantage any of these guys without having to worry about health, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Distant Counter, obviously, is kind of a must-have. You know, I was thinking about running maybe Distant Foil or something to get more attack on her, uh, but that's really not... That's very counterintuitive to being able to, like, to fight a lot of other units. Um, yeah. Uh, Belief in Love is an excellent skill for her to have. She doesn't have Flyer Formation, unfortunately, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, she drops them by 5 attack, but the important thing is she drops them by 5 defense, so, you know, that's more damage, which is always good. Uh, she's got this to help give whatever to give that. I gave her Glimmer because chances are she's, like, you want her to attack into effective things, right? Things that she's effective against. So Glimmer will give you the most damage out of that because you're, you're, you're multiplying the multiplier of having a weapon effectiveness, so that's why I gave her Glimmer. Um, and then lastly, we gave her attack defense bond because her, her defense is kind of low. So even if she does have to fight, she's kind of okay at it. She's at 32 and 32. Again, that, that same motif of keeping the, um, <laughs> the stats the same. Um, you know, uh, and then obviously she gets more attack. So, you know, she can hit harder. Uh, I did make a mistake on this team. Uh, this, it's already locked in as you can, as you saw from before. So I have to unlock it, re-bless everybody and then lock it again. So I'm kind of like, eh. Uh, but there's a mistake I made here. This needs to be um, attack speed. Uh, 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 goad flyers is what it is. Uh, this needs to be goad flyers so that this and this gives her seven attack. Basically, you want to increase her attack as much as possible. Is what the bottom line is. Um, because she and then because she can't reach Camilla, it's okay that she's not wearing a ward, right? Because the only people she's warding is her, who should be counterattacking and destroying people. Her, who doesn't need it a whole lot. Her and her, right? They're not wholly useful of those skills. So giving her a um, a goad is actually going to be better. But like I said, I have to go re uh, reapply that. I have a plus one because I was too stupid to uh, have just two Mirabilises on my defense, which would have been a lot better. Um, yeah, like significantly better, in ter especially in terms of that aggressiveness we're talking about where like we have to get movement. So having two dancers with flyer formations all over the place and giving them, you know, just better mobility is going to be uh, ultimately the key there. So as soon as I get another one, I'll probably find some way to turn this into a two Mirabilis team comp, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so Fortress Res defense is kind of like what you're going to put on her. Uh, sabotage defense, you know, <laughs> it's not a whole lot, a whole lot else that you want to run on her. Uh, you know, like I said, th these should have been this should have been a goad, but it was I didn't think it through at the time. Uh, Glaces is here because 
it's going to be the highest damage she's going to get. Uh, and, you know, she can just kind of accidentally kill something sometimes. Uh, so I just put it in there. Uh, of course, for those of you, I guess we'll go, like I said, we'll go over all these. Uh, if there's a penalty on anybody, they get dropped by uh, everything by three, except for speed, which is kind of weird that it's not speed. Um, but that's fine, right? So everybody gets dropped by three. Uh, invisible buffs, debuffs. Uh, this is why you want, like, you don't necessarily want her off in the corner over here. You kind of want her here so that hits everybody, but I can't really afford to have her out here because she'll just get sniped. So she's going to be sitting here just as, primarily as a dancer. So this, the sword isn't that useful until uh, they start, like, kind of splaying out, like, around here. And, like, they all start moving around these areas. Uh, and then she's kind of, like, around here somewhere, like, hitting people with those debuffs. Uh, and then Whimsical Dream, of course, it's just a dance, but it gives everybody plus five uh, and then drops their attack by plus four uh, by minus five minus drops her attack by minus five for everybody around uh, four spaces so once once she's like down here basically that's everybody no one's gonna escape the minus five so that's pretty cool uh but yeah other than that uh she's just here to be a dancer and um offer sabotage <laughs> as best she can uh and lastly but certainly not least uh my favorite unit uh, the unit I am one away from plus 10-ing, uh, which I will eventually get, even though the plus 10 isn't very worth it on her, because it only gives you one more defense and one more res. I just want to have the plus 10, just because, I mean, I think I, I think we would all want to have the plus 10 and not just a plus 9 like that, uh, despite how much how detrimental it would be to, to chase that. Uh, I still, I think I'll, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, bottom line, so last one here. Sun's Precursors is a very interesting weapon. I'm not sure how it works. I mean, okay, well... Let's not sound too stupid. I know how it works, but I'll talk about why it's odd to me sometimes. Um, so she's got the she came with this, which is going to be like the best thing you can give her. Um, you can't give her attack speed solo because she's never going to be solo. Uh, you can give her attack speed bond four, which is probably going to be pretty good. Um, which actually I'd probably encourage that, uh, but I don't have that uh, just readily available to give away. I don't think any. I don't think I have it at all. Period. Um, but you know. The attack speed push for works fine just as it is, so it is what it is. Oh, but yeah, uh, the the attack defense bond, the attack speed bond would be the best because not only that, it actually clears any speed debuffs that she has, which is like I was talking about earlier. I can take this off of her and then just have her run normally. Uh, well, having to worry about chills or having to worry about like the sabotages and, and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so like I said. If you, have a, if you have that, I'd suggest putting that on her. Uh, it is kind of a waste because she has the attack speed push 4 and then you're just giving her another like tier 4 skill for uh, just, you know, <laughs> kind of because you have to. Like I said, you know, it is what it is, but that's what I would suggest. Um, now, she has the wind sweep for obvious reasons. Uh, basically means that she can't be counterattacked by any physical unit unless they're faster than she is, but with so much speed stacking from... She's already got a base 50 plus the 7... Uh, plus the 5, which I'll get to why this is kind of odd that it doesn't work. Um, plus the 4 from this, plus the uh, 3 from this, right? And then she drops people by 3, by 4, right? If they're around her. So if they're, if they're right here, she comes here, or she comes here and hits them, that they're dropping by 4. So there you go. Um, yeah, so Wind Sweep is an excellent uh, skill to have on her, just in general. So there you go. Uh, she's got this because obviously she's in range of Camilla, so she can give Camilla more uh, defense. And Flyer Formation gives her more mobility, which you kind of need for uh, your nuker like this. Rifter Sky is uh, excellent because it gives you Beast and uh, Dragon effectiveness, which is just phenomenal. And I didn't realize it was Beast effectiveness until right now. I was thinking it might have been, but I wasn't sure because those of you who saw that one video, I was thinking about um, putting Ruptured Sky onto my, uh, my Patrine. Uh, and I was like, okay, it'll give her beast and because her weapon has beast effectiveness. And then I was like, oh, I'll give her dragon effectiveness. But basically, I'm just giving her more beast effectiveness, which, funnily enough, I have to go check the calculator because with Ruptured Sky and uh, her Lance, I wonder if she can fight Freya pretty easily. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll, 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 that'll be a different video for another time. Uh, but yeah, Ruptured Sky basically is pretty good because it basically gives you uh, beast coverage and dragon coverage. Um, not 100%, right? But it's 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 more than nothing, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, what else? So let's take a look at this weapon here. This weapon gives you school, cool uh, cooldown charge minus one. So you know, basically, she she doubles and she can't get counter attack. So she's gonna hit somebody uh, with the thing no matter what. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, start of combat, if unit speed is greater than foe speed or if foe speed is... Uh, or if their HP is 100%, she gets these buffs, right? Uh, during combat, neutralizes effects, and then she, she takes away... Um, they can't double you. They can't uh, force double you, and then um, they can't negate your, your follow-up, which basically means you can't... Um, it'll negate... So normally this negates your follow-up as well as their follow-up. No. It negates your follow-up, and it negates their counterattack. But because Byleth has... Um, this weapon, it negates this negative effect to keep you from from follow up attacking. So basically, she only gets the positives and none of the negatives, and then she just gets two hits for free without you know worrying about anything. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. So the thing that that's odd about this weapon is that if she's at all faster than someone, so she's one speed faster than someone, at least one speed, you know, the minimum you can be faster than someone else. She should double them, because if she's at least one speed faster, she'll get the plus five. So now she's six speed faster, so now she should double them. And sometimes she doesn't, and I'm not entirely sure why. I can't really understand what what, what's, what the what the calculation is doing, or, or what's going on in the background, in the mathematical aspect. Uh, specifically because of this. There will be times where you know she's at least one speed faster, because this only checks for one speed faster, and then they can't counterattack. I've been in situations where wind sweep has triggered telling me that they are in fact one speed she is in fact once at least one speed faster than they are. So this should trigger so this triggers and they can't counterattack. But this does not, meaning I don't get the plus 5 speed from this to be able to double them, right? I'm only I only hit them once. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Um something is weird about it. Like I said, it should be a guaranteed double if you're at least one speed faster than them, because that's what this weapon kind of uh, entails. So, I don't know. Like I said, something might be calculating certain things at weird times and then just kind of chopping something off or something like that, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately, I don't have any flowers into her either, so that's kind of another thing um, I need to give her. It was kind of, for those of you who are paying attention, uh, you'd know that if I give her a flower, she'll get one extra speed. And then she'll tie with her, meaning if somebody is running a, uh, a chill, they're going to chill both of them. So this strategy of running a uh, attack speed seal right there is not really useful because um, with with flowers, she's just going to overcome uh, Minerva speed anyway. So <laughs> that was kind of dumb. Uh, so I'm going to change this. And like I said, if as soon as I get an attack speed bond 4, I'm just going to put that in here because... Uh, it's just going to be too good to just negate those attack speed penalties, uh, especially with all the bonuses she gets from that. So uh, that's that. Uh, so here, so this is so uh, those of you seen. This is the team. There's not much else. Like I said, these 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 buildings, like this, like this, um, like these, like all these buildings have been here since Aether Raid's launch. The only new one is this one, and that's just to stop a new mechanic that was in that was at, um, that was introduced, which was the dual mechanic. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I don't. I feel like there needs to be more buildings added to here, um, and I think they're already kind of on, a, on an interesting track with the buildings in the uh, Rokar sieges. Is that what they are? No, no, no. That's not it. Um, ugh. The one where you have to fight the. I think it's. Ah, I forgot what her name was. I think it's Thor. Thor's whatever. That one mode, you know the one I'm talking about, where you have to fight against like waves and you have those little uh, statues, every, the, the little um, buildings everywhere, and you can upgrade them all that stuff. It's got some currency and all that. Uh, I, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, yeah, I feel like some of those could make a transition into into defense, and it wouldn't even be a big problem. Like they wouldn't be so necessarily unbalanced, you know. Um, some of them might. I'm not gonna say that they're, they're, none of them are, but some of them might. Like. Like, what if we got that one that charges specials? I mean, that one could be kind of overpowered in a lot of ways, and it would kind of make uh, IP teams basically useless, so IP is just kind of thrown out the window at that point. Um, but it would be something that'd be kind of interesting to have just like, oh, charge everybody specials right off the bat on the on turn one or something like that, or just give everybody a minus one or have a limit on it or something. I'm not saying they should, right? But it, I think it's something worth exploring because defense is just too easily like exploited right now by everything that's going on, especially like Regan and things like that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that's the layout is kind of what it is what it is um i put this here now you can put this here uh and then you know now they can't snipe this the only way to snipe this is by standing here and then i have this trap here uh but i'd rather have it here because 
if this is here, that means that she's easily baited out into attacking this spot, and you can just put like a Bector right there and he won't die, so I'm not really into that. Uh, or not even a Bector, just like a Mage, put like some kind of Mage right there and she'll like survive and then just not die. Um, so I'd rather have this here to have them kind of focus like funnel everything. I, I forget you guys can't see the, the mouse. So just have them funnel like on this side of the of the of the map. Um, but yeah, so now that we've talked about what the team looks like and all that stuff, uh, let's go over some defenses, uh, see what's happened uh, more. What am I looking at here? Yeah, I guess that was it. Uh, my defense results. So let's take a look here. So you can see here I've lost. Oh, you can't see here. Let's go to check awards. Just to have the, the total. So we've lost 202 uh, lift. Now, if I can patch this up, right, maybe lose half of that, I would have easily made it into tier 28, right, without even making too big a deal. Um, so it's important to realize how, well, you know, at the sound of reiterating, how important your defense is these days. Uh, especially because now you lose significantly more on defense. Um, but yeah, so, like I said, I just need to patch this up. Hopefully I can. Uh, hopefully we can, you know, improve this in some way. And then going forward, I won't lose so much lift. And we can, you know, coast that tier 28 a lot easier. Or just make it tier 28 a lot easier. Uh, so let's kind of go in here and see how this defense works usually. And, and see what the pitfalls are of it. Uh, especially on Astro Season. Now now that the, the there's so many Astro Mythics and Light Mythics... It's a really big distinction between seasons. So something that might work in one season now, that was always the case, right? Something that might work in one season might not work in another season. That's always been there. But I feel like nowadays with, with so many, like, like, like take Regan, for example. Regan's something you really have to consider. In light season, you really have to consider Freya, right? So the, the seasons are very, I think to my, at least for, in my opinion, the seasons are, are starting to really differentiate each other from each other quite drastically. So... Um, I think that's kind of interesting at the very least, um, but yeah. So let's let's see what's um, see what happened here. Uh, we won't do what's it called because we have to go through a lot of these. Uh, so let's take a look at this Regan. So this Regan is non-merged. Uh, she's non-merged. I'm not sure why she's here. She might be a bonus unit. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, you're here. Still not very interesting. Uh, you're here again. Not not wholly interesting. And you're here, so I'm not entirely sure what the strategy is here, which just might be why they die. So we'll kind of look, try to go fast, and then not, you know, dwell too much on this one. So this, this is a weakness here, right? Like, this is why you want to put this right here. Uh, because now that, like, you could just put a guy here and snipe that, and then just have, like, a unit come here and then snipe this. And now, like, a Thame is, is live, right? For, for those of you who run, like, Kronia... Like a bolt tower can now destroy these people, like hit these people really hard, and I can't heal anyway. So, um, of course, uh, one of the hardest things to deal with now, which you, we'll see this, all, we'll see this come up a lot in the the rest of the um, the replays, is that Regan is hard to counter. Like she just comes in and destroys Camilla because they have the charge Seder show, which is uh, adaptive damage plus fifteen on top of two damage. Uh, so. It's not easy. We're, we're now we run into another roadblock, and I have to figure out how to deal with her. Like I said, if you had um, Sateth, this might be a lot easier. You might not even have to like Sateth or Ashnard. It might be like significantly easier because they're so tanky that Regan doesn't do anything. Uh, not only is Regan hitting my weakest stat, which shouldn't be either of them because they're both even, uh, but she's red, so she gets a lot of elemental advantage, and then she's got you know a huge power spike from the um, what's it called the Seder Shell there. Something's wrong here. Oh, okay, that's why. I was like, what's up with their stats? They're so high. So she only survived that one shot. She had to get doubled. She only survived the one shot because of the la the, the difference in the fourth difference here, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so I think she they just basically lost this one off of the fact that, like, they're just woeful woefully unprepared is what I'll chalk this up to. Uh, but I'm actually curious to see what actually happened here. She hit her, and she didn't actually kill her, which is kind of interesting. Okay. It looks like we should lose here. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, let's see. So, that they got healed, so she's dead. Yeah, she dies to Minerva. So, I guess this team gave them a false sense of, like, survivability, so they all started moving up forward, and basically just Minerva and uh, Sheeta had free reign on everybody. Uh, and then you can't really kill her. Well, especially not with the fort buffs. Uh, so then she just killed her, I think. 
yep, she's dead. Then she kills her, right? And then she dances. Oh, she doesn't even need to dance. She just kills her. Okay, so that was just like a bad replay. I mean, we won that, but that was not... Um, I should have lost that against like anybody better. But let's go see what happens here. See if this one's better. Um, so right off the bat, I guess we're looking at a sort of... Uh, a beast team here. Maybe... Um, Tib Barnes is going to come in here and destroy everybody. Maybe he's going to do that. Oh, Gale Force. Maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so look at his fort. Okay, so we're even. So this is this should be a lot better indicator of how this team's supposed to play out. Um, somehow we won, I guess. It's always strange to see um, how you win certain things. So here's, here's exactly what I'm talking about. People think that they're safe by just ending turn with a tank here. Uh, but let's see how this plays out. So who attacks first? So she attacks, right, because she can hit him. Without getting retaliated on. And he just dies like straight up. So there you go. And she had ruptured sky. So that was another reason. She has ruptured sky so she did double damage against. Not double damage. Like double the ruptured sky damage. This is, is 20% of their attack. Now it's 40% of their attack. Uh, so as much as you can dance him and move him around. This is the problem with having um, Nisala as your main uh, Gale Forcer. Is that like he just. Like anyone that's not Leaf is a problem. Because. Leaf can take multiple turns where you can dance him and then you have to get out with like Nesalo and obviously they couldn't really escape. And then we all just sort of camped on these. So this is perfect. I mean, I don't know how the CPU could come up with a better situation than this. And then he, he danced her to see, he put her there, he put him there to see what he could do and apparently it wasn't a whole lot because now she's going to die. Yep, killed her. She's a huge threat. Uh, now we're left with two more, and I think he's just going to leave after this, right? Oh no, he still fights. And then she dies. And then that's when the game is over. <laughs> he didn't want to let go. Uh, so, here we we won, uh, but we won on time. Uh, would we have lost if there was another turn? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but um, certainly we, we wouldn't have lost a lot of lift anyway if we, did, if we hadn't won this. Um, so that's the first two. So let's look at a failure. Let's see what one of the some of the weak points of this team are. Um, I think it's Regan here. I'm not entirely sure though. So Rioma. Ooh, this is an interesting. This is an interesting build. 51 speed, speed res solo. This is gonna be. This is gonna be a lot worse. Well, some people still benefit better from the speed res solo, but we're gonna see. We're gonna start seeing because we have the attack speed solo. We're gonna start seeing a lot of that. Uh, a lot of spurn. Uh, speed attack speed solo and then whatever you want to put here um, but he has disencounter in his weapon so he doesn't have to worry about all that stuff about what to run in he doesn't have to worry about running disencounter in the a slot and i think we lose here i think we just lose straight up to rioma which is kind of interesting unless we lose to reagan well let's see i think we might lose to reagan yeah so reagan does not one shot us again strangely enough uh one plus one so this reagan had Swift Sparrow, and she still didn't one-shot us. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, but with Regan, one of the funny things is, I think with the uh, guard bearing, I should be safe from her. Like, she won't die at all. Um, which, you know. So once, as you can see here, once we lose Camilla, like, stuff just starts, like, splattering all over the place, and then we're all just easy pickings from there, right? So uh, there's Reinhardt. Uh, then Reinhardt hits her, and then now no one's in range. And then he has two dancers, so... There you go. So you can kind of see where we lost here. Now, like I said, would we have won if Camilla survived that? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I think we certainly would have fared a lot better off. Like, people wouldn't just, like, move out of position like this so easily and then become, you know, easy picking. Um, so there you go. That That's one situation where Hardy Bearing probably would have been the best um, to have in that B slot. But let's kind of see what's going on over here. Especially because, like, the thing, again, the thing with... Um, with uh, Pegasus Flight was it had to be fast enough, so she was at four. She's like forty four speed plus the, the Swift Sparrow one and two. She's at eleven more speed than that, so she's at fifty five, and I'm nowhere near forty five. So I, you know, Guard Bearing would have been absolutely the the, the choice there. Uh, so let's kind of see how how this plays out. I think they're just gonna try to bike, and I'm not sure that's a good idea because I don't think that's gonna work. So let's go find out. Well, I, I mean, obviously they end up losing, but um, let's just see how how it actually ends up going. Okay, so he thinks he can end turn. 
with Chris over there. I think that's Chris, right? Chris Redfield. Okay, so Violet just killed him. So <laughs> there's not a whole lot you can do there. Uh, and both of these aren't letting his special charge, which means it saves us a lot of damage that we would otherwise be taking. Um, and now he can't really hit in, into any of these. Right, because Bike doesn't work on player phase. He only works on, on enemy phase. So he has to wait for your enemies to tech into him. So this is one situation where, um, specifically with Camilla, the, the, the guard might have been what saved her there. So if she didn't have guard, she might have died. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but as you can see here, basically after this is just easy pickings. Like there's nothing else they can do. And replay. Uh, so there's that. So that's just kind of a, a, um, a more that's this more reinforcement to um, why I built this team and what you know the thought process is behind it. So the main thing we want to look for here is, is like I said, weaknesses and how we can patch these things up. Okay, so I think Reagan is going to be our downfall again. Let's take a look here. Yep. So we can't really fight Reagan, uh, unfortunately. Especially a plus eight. Whoa, that's a lot. And she doesn't even have a C slot, so or a, a, a sacred slot. So you can seal. She doesn't have a seal. There we go. Uh, and then from there, like I said, losing Camilla is just a huge uh, detriment because now everybody just starts moving around like idiots. So with the introduction of Regan, this that's one of the main reasons why I've started decide or started thinking about running um, heavy uh, heavy heavy foil, uh, distant foil, uh, because against Regan, like as you can see there, she kind of like almost gets one shot and then gets killed by leftover damage. And I'm wondering if I can possibly stack enough defense or enough just stats in general onto her. But now that I realize it. Yeah, because, because the visible res is higher than the visible defense, the Seder Shell special will um, hit defense. So giving her invisible defense should go a long way to helping her survive. But I think just trying to stack defense on her isn't going to help, so I might end up having to go with the guard bearing um, to counter Regan. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, and replay, okay. So there we go. We lost to Reagan there, which is uh, not too uh, unpredictable. Let's go. Uh, let's go see what's going on over here. How do we lose here? It's always interesting. I think we're gonna lose the bike here. So one of the things that um, one of the main ideas is that uh, that spot where they're about to put Vector is supposed to be like. Make you tankier, but not tanky enough. One of the one of the un one of the main units that can like claim uh, the position of unkillable in that position is going to be the bike, is the vector. Uh, as you can see, I did no damage. She healed back with the mystic boost. Uh, she did no damage. Uh, you know, and then my two green units, which are supposed to be there to, for that. See, so even with the charge, like you can beat some vectors, uh, but you can't beat them all, uh, unfortunately. So that's kind of what we're stuck at here. Yeah, so Pala can beat some vectors, but most vectors she can't, uh, unfortunately. Let's go see what's going on here. So 52 defense, uh, two Nagas is, will do that to you. Um, so two Nagas and Altina and Regan, which gives her six more attack. So he's at 65 uh, at a plus four. It's not too bad. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do against this. Like, there's no green nuker you could probably use other than maybe um, Thrasir. Is she even on this season? I think she is, yeah. So if I had, like, a Thrasir here, maybe, I don't know, in some position, then I could, you know, I could kill Hector. Maybe. That's a maybe. It's a solid maybe. Um, so it's important to realize that, like, there's there's there's, there's too much to do where in terms of, like, making one unit, like, invincible. Um, especially on this map with this tile set, right? Like I said, this tile set is designed to have people stand here, and we, we've seen a few people lose like that already. Kind of bait them into this position here, and then just destroy them because, like, not even anybody can survive that. If even if you're thinking, even if you're on a defense tile, 
Uh, but Bechter's one of the few people that can actually do that and just, like, um, come out fine. Not, like, you know, not even remotely, you know, flinched whatsoever. Um, so, I've been thinking about maybe choosing a different, um, a different tile set, one that doesn't have that. But while I don't think that, um, I do think it'll solve it to some degree. I don't think it's going to 100% solve it. Like, we're still going to be losing to really well-positioned or well-built vectors is basically the reason I haven't switched off this tile set yet. Um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, there is solutions to this. Vector's not invincible, um, but currently I don't have the answer to him, uh, a readily available answer to him uh, with my units. Uh, but yeah, so let's go back. I mean, like I said, I'll have to think about what to do against Vector uh, in the future. Especially because he's no longer a tank. So, like, if she was fighting against, um, what's her name? If she was fighting against Young Sheeta and she and he was still a tank. She might have done more damage to him. Um, he did zero. She did zero damage, so probably not. But you know, it's a possibility that she could have done more to him. So, that is what it is. The only other, the only, I'm, I'm th I would think to run. I would actually think to run. Um, I want to give her attack speed bond four, but I'm really just gonna. I think I'm just gonna wait until because this this works fine, right? But I think I'm just going to wait until uh, attack speed unity comes out the same way attack defense and attack um, res unity come out. That's probably gonna be the best solution for her um, in the long run, and maybe a lot of these like, well, you can't change that. You can't really change that either. Well, yeah, a lot of people can't change it. She's really the only one who has an open A slot for something like that. Because I was thinking, maybe I could run like an attack defense unity on one of these other people or something like that if I ever pull one. But I don't think it's really worth uh, having that. I'm not sure what happens here. This is a pretty interestingly built Yulger. I'm not sure why they built Yulger and not, um, <laughs> and not like uh, an Echidna or, or a uh, or a Ninja Hana. Let's see where this goes. Uh, let's see this Cronia. I don't know what this. I don't. I'm not sure why this Cronia is here. Um. Yeah. So basically, my team covers most things except for. So far, we've seen that my team doesn't really handle uh, Reagan very good, but that might be solved with a uh, guard bearing and Bector, which. Well, I still have yet to figure out what I'm going to do against Spectre. And there's only one more threat that... Um, there's only one more threat that has yet to show up. I feel like I've seen it already, though. Okay, so she does no damage, obviously. Because he's blue and he's a tank. Uh, but we got Minerva. So I think the problem, the main problem here, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but the main problem was here was like, there was no strategy. They just kind of put four units together and waltzed in here. Um, I thought they were going to try to like tank <laughs> with Yoga or something, but I'm not entirely sure what the, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, they just kind of, that, that wasn't really like, again, that was like some of these matches, you, you can't really gleam a whole lot from other than like the person who played against you misplayed or something like that. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, is this, ooh, that's very interesting. I wonder. Yeah, that's very interesting. So then I'm assuming I lost to Kranya, which is pretty curious because I wonder how I lost to her. I mean, my, I generally, you know, Kind of like not necessarily pride myself but like i generally kind of think that uh i build a a Kronia proof um thing but maybe i've been slacking let's see what happens so the healing came through i think what they're going to do is just snipe this chair and then move up forward and then snipe this and then now that they're all reduced, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Oh, she just killed her right off the bat. Okay. Yeah, this is the other. This is the other thing that I wanted to point out. Um, the other weakness. So so far, we we've got a few weaknesses uh, identified, right? So we've got Reagan. We need to be able to deal with Reagan. We've got um, Bector. We need to be able to deal with Bector. 
Uh, and lastly, we have the Bolt Tower, which is almost uncounterable without the Catapult, right? Which is why um, Duma was up there where Cheetah is, so he could just pop it. But even then, dedicating a whole team slot to Duma just to pop uh, Bolt Towers was not guaranteed because you often miss Bolt Towers because people, you know, not everyone puts them in the same place. Uh, so I think like the fact that your team loses to a bolt tower is kind of another um, another big problem, which you know I think most teams have to deal with, not just like a flyer ball or something like that. Uh, so we we got some kills here. So he doesn't have special spiral on her. Yeah, he does. I don't know what. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Oh, I guess he, oh, it's because probably he just one shot her. Oh, that was interesting. Okay, so that was the most interesting thing that I saw right there, right? Come on, let me see her. That means... Because the Thame had plus 5. That means that she outsped... Normally, the reason I don't have Hardy Bearing and have to deal with Kronya is because Byleth should outspeed people and then fire sweep them. So, I don't have to run Hardy Bearing on a, on a Vantage Juner. Vantage Juner. I don't have to run Hardy Bearing on a, against a Vantage user, user like Kronia because the Wind Sweep should handle that because she shouldn't even be able to counterattack me at all. I could just hit her for free. But in that case, she was fast enough because not only does she have the 5 from a Thame. I think she had it. I'm not entirely sure. She might not have. But anyway, she had that 5, but she also had 5 from... Uh, or 6 from Corrin. Oh, no. No, 4 from Corrin, right? And then uh, just a bunch of attack. <laughs> So, I think this is where so this is the one unit he loses uh, was that. Yeah. So that situation, uh, the problem again comes down to um, Bolt Tower hit us really hard. Like we weren't able to recover after that. We at least got one unit, but um, you know, it is what it is. Um, let's go back here. But yeah, so. I might have to, yeah, I'm just going to have to figure out what to do with, uh, <laughs> with, um, with Byleth there. Now, if Byleth had attack speed bond, again, that wouldn't have been useful there because there was no one near her when she attacked Kranya, so even that wouldn't have helped, right? So, one of those things to consider is, is how all these things work together. Let's go look at this. And we're not getting the one unit that has been destroying me. And I guess it was just the last season. Because I have the same team for last season. Except for this is replaced with someone else. I forgot who it was. I think it's... Oh, it's... uh, What's her name? You know her name. Um, Sothis. Yeah, Sothis is here. Because she's the unit. So we lost here. But let's see how we lost. Uh, we got one unit, I think it says we killed. Lethal Carrot... Uh, noontime. So this is a pretty interesting combo. Uh, they attack into her. She attacks back with lethal carry. Does ten piercing damage and then um, heals from whatever from whatever is there. She's getting a guaranteed three heal too from noontime because of the ten damage. Well, it's like yeah, it's like three, which is pretty good. At least three, right? And then you know after that is you know whatever else you get. And then she gets pushed. Let's see what kind of damage this Cecilia does. That's very interesting. She hit her for 16. If I had guard bearing, she'd hit her for only 8. And I wonder if she would have survived that. I think I had 11, so I think she would have. But it's not really worth it because... Wow, that's it. she took no damage. So she took no damage primarily because... Um, she has the, the special spiral, or the special fighter. Hmm... She's a lot stronger than I feel like she should be in 51. Yeah, I guess that's just what a, what a properly invested Cecilia is, looks like. Plus 10, yep. Uh, and then she hit her twice. So I hit her, but she didn't have proper... Um, she only has one effectiveness on her. And then, okay, so this is what happens. So this is kind of what you need, right? You need your team... To be able to have enough movement to start hitting people other than the one they put you to hit, which is going to be, like I said, Vector last time, uh, or uh, in this case, Cecilia, right? And then now my Pala is nerfed because she doesn't have, uh, what's it called? 
because she doesn't have enough flyers around her. No, I think she does. Well, she attacks twice, but yeah, not not a big. That doesn't do very much considering. Twenty three. So she does a lot of damage. And this is this is one of those reasons why. So this is one of the reasons you want to run the Subasa or, like I said, the Est over the Pala because they do come with um, armor effectiveness. But my the way I kind of see it is that like the only armor to care about these days is going to be Bector, and they don't have any effectiveness against Bector anyway. So may as well run the next best thing is Pala. Now, as you saw here, that was not that wasn't the case, right? Because we lost to a um, armor Cecilia. Uh, but in that case, I think it's a, a, an acceptable loss. I would say, like, I wouldn't really, I don't really mind losing here, I, I, like in that way, because I didn't have the armor effectiveness. I think I can beat this in another way, without being too, without it being too big a deal. Is my, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, we didn't go, we didn't show one of the the main the main weakness of this team that I've come to realize um, last season specifically. Because last season I was getting destroyed by them. I don't know why. It seems like everybody and their mother has one. Uh, but New Year's Alphonse is basically almost tailor-made to beat my team. Uh, you might say, how is that even possible when I have um, two decently hard-hitting uh, red... Or red. Two decently hard-hitting um, green units on my team. Uh, that's because you can stack... New Year's Alphonse defense to a ridiculous degree. Like, you could probably have 60 defense without even breaking a sweat and then just counterattack with, like, infinite magic damage because he's always, his special is always charged. He's got healing, and because they keep rerunning him, people have run, are just running around with a plus 10 um, New Year's Alphonse without even breaking a sweat. So that's, a, that's, that's another one. I'm not sure, again, how to deal with that. I don't have any, like... I can't run another green unit on my team is the bottom line. And the two green units are there. Let's go back here. So you can see why I lost, and you can see, you know, where all that lift went. There's really nothing I can do here, and none of these, like, like all three of these have just run into him and died. Obviously, the, these two, it's easy to understand why they died. Um, but, like, her, she can't fight him, she can't fight him, and um, Pala can't touch him, like, even remotely. Like, I'm talking four hits with Moonbow, Four hits with the two Moonbows, and she barely does any damage to him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really interesting position to be in. Uh, I never thought I'd lose to something like that, but now i got to start figuring out what to do against uh, against Alphonse. Um, but yeah, especially because, like, like Pala's not weak to, ma to, to magical damage, right? She has 34 res, uh, plus all the, you know, wards stacking that I have going on. You'd think she'd be able to sustain something like that, but she cannot. She just dies uh, off the one shot. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, like I said, the only way to do, the only way to beat him is going to be with, like a green mage, which would be good because then uh, with that green mage, I can also counter Bector. But there is no green mage I have that is worth kind of decomposing parts of my team for. And on top of that, there's no green mage that I have that can be in a position like that right so the only spare position i have in this entire thing is going to be her or her right because it's her or her or her right but i don't i need the blue threat and i can't just have three greens right because that'd be stupid so it's either going to be her or her but the problem is i can't replace any of these with her, with this new, with this new green mage, and I keep saying her because it, it's probably gonna be Thrasir or some other female green mage, because maybe like Celica would be nice. Yeah, Celica. I, I just recently pulled the legendary Celica. Oh yeah, you, for those of you who saw that video, I forgot that I had it on video. Um, but yeah, it, you know, maybe like a Celica or something like that. Those are the only, like, those are the only units I'd use to counter. Um, you know, Vector or the, oh, what's the name? The problem with that is they're just going to die to Leaf. Like, these positions are not safe. These three positions here need to be Leaf-proof because Leaf is just going to come in here, hit them, and run away, and then we lost that, that game. So, that's something to consider is that, like, think about what you're sacrificing for something else. Now, Vector 
is pretty common. Like you have to think about what's what's common. The fact that Leaf is so broken, I think, makes a lot of people just kind of like he's an easy unit to use because not only that, you can use him on defense. You can't use Vector on defense. You can't use uh, Winter CC on defense. Uh, but Leaf, you can use on offense and defense because of how prevalent Cav lines are on defense. So you just slap him in there and he's solid. Uh, and then on offense, obviously you have more control over him, so he's gonna be a lot better. Um, so yeah, I mean, what am I, how am I going to deal with this? I still have yet to come up with that answer, but you know, these are, like I said, all this stuff is just stuff for you guys to consider if you're building a flyer ball, which I, I never made these videos as like a, oh, here, look, this is why you should build a flyer ball. Because even at, even when I started making videos on my flyer ball and, and what, you know, what I think is good for flyer balls and all that kind of stuff. I realized that flyer ball wasn't the answer and you know I mentioned a lot of times that like I choose flyer ball not because it's the best even though it's I think it's probably second to uh cav line in terms of how good it is um like I said I don't I don't I didn't choose it because it is the best I choose I chose it because I like flyers most of my units my favorite units are flyers um and the the we're, we're running into that problem where flyer balls just aren't good enough compared to cav line so what I'm saying here is that take if you have a flyer ball and you feel like you want to go through what I'm going through constantly with flyer balls, you know, learn from this. Learn that you need something before you start wasting resources on units you don't need. Uh, learn that you need something to counter vectors. Learn that you need to counter leaves. Learn, you know, learn what you can about from this channel doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing. You know, if I'm going to waste a hardy bearing on Camilla, well, let me waste it and not have you waste it, you know, on something stupid and then. There you go. You wasted a, a really good fodder that could have been used for something else at some point, right? Um, so that, that's kind of my what this channel is. But unfortunately, as as time is going on and, and uh, Aether Rays is, is evolving, um, the bottom line is flyer balls just aren't as good as cav lines. Um, cav line doesn't have to worry about Vector because they're not all just going to smash into Vector. They're going to try to get around Vector and kill your backline. They don't have to worry about Winter CC. They don't have to worry about, um, what's her name? What's his name? Bike. They could just go around Bike and start sniping everything else except Bike, right? So that's something to consider is, is why, why Cav Lines are so good because they don't have to play your game. Cav Lines play their own game. They don't have to sit there and, and wait until you feed them a unit. They can just start doing whatever they want to do. You know, basically. Now, obviously, they have, we have to wait for them to, to start moving and all that stuff. But because of their range, hits all your backline down here, where your units are standing, that means they're active from turn one. The thing about anything that's not a cav line means that your range depends on where, how active you are. So they have all this room down here to start setting up and start moving around and start seeing what they're going to do. So that's something to consider, is just keep that in mind, is that um, there's... <laughs> there's a lot of benefits to running a cav line in general um that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to find a way to play with like which is one of the kind of the reasons i liked running flyer balls is because like if someone makes a vector or someone makes a cecilia you have to play around that unit you have to kind of like think about what you're gonna do when you come up with that unit where a lot of times not all the time right a lot of times as you guys saw that video for those of you who saw uh, actress's new video uh, he did have to play around, oh, they have a Freya, I have to play around Freya. But a lot of times you don't, you know, the thing about cav lines is you have to do that to a minimal degree, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, what units they have, because if you're running a cav line, it's because they're not going to fight that one unit. You don't have to sit there and be like, oh, how do I deal with Vector? I mean, you can, but you don't really have to deal with Vector. You can just set up your cav line in a way that they can just move around Vector and not have to worry about them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of something to consider, um, you know, Hopefully you guys can glean something from this for your own uh, flyer balls, and hopefully, um, you know, you guys are, are starting to see the strength of cav line. And if you want to build a cav line, you know, that's entirely up to you. Um, just you know, like I said, all I can do is is show you guys how these things turn out, um, and uh, yeah. So hopefully you don't have to use up, you know, waste end up wasting fodder. You don't have to. So hopefully the next time I might not, I mean I might show more defense replays. But I'm probably not going to go into detail about my, my defense team in, much anymore because there's not a whole lot that's going to change, especially because now it's costly to change it because I have to change blessings and all that stuff every, every time. Which is why you kind of want two teams, one for Astra, one for one for Dark, and one for Anima, uh, so that you don't have to keep swapping blessings around. It's just like that team is built for that and this team is built for this. 
Uh, but I can't really be bothered, uh, so I'm just building a one team fits all kind of thing. Um, what else is there? Yeah, so the only thing I, I, I've got left is I gotta go find a um, attack speed push four, or attack speed bond four, and kind of sit there and I gotta contemplate whether I wanna take off guard and give her um, guard bearing. Um, because, and I think, I think I might end up doing that just because with guard bearing, that's one less thing I'm losing to, right? Regans, they're still going to hit hard and they're still going to be like, I'm not going to deal, I'm not going to be able to deal with them very well. Uh, but that's kind of my worry, right? The main worry is not that I'm wasting fodder. It's that I'll give her the same way I gave her like Fury 4 or what well, I kind of had to because I needed the attack speed rain. Um, but like take the fortress res defense, even though I have like 20 of them now, I don't have 20, but you know, I have a bunch of them. I don't know what to do with them. Um, I wasted a attack, a, a fortress res defense on Camilla and I don't use it on her because it's not useful. That's kind of my only concern is that like, I'll give her a guard bearing and then I'll, it'll turn out that that wasn't really an answer. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, what else? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of the main thing is, um, just, you know, that's one one extra thing you don't have to worry about if you solve it with a better unit, right? You could solve the issue of Reagan with just a uh, Ashnard or a uh, Sateth. Now, in terms of uh, other units, take um, in terms of like what's his name? In terms of the Bector and the um, what's his name? The Bector and like the Bolt Tower stuff, dealing with Bolt Towers. Those are entirely different stories altogether, and that's kind of something I have to go you know deal with on my own um but yeah so hopefully uh, to some degree this helped uh, some of you and you know <laughs> you don't make uh, similar similarly poor choices to what's going on here um yeah so that, that'll be it for today i think um not sure what the next video is going to be or, or what i'm going to make it on but uh yeah that's that we'll see uh, i guess we'll see each other on the other side and see if we any of us consistently if most of us consistently make it to uh tier 38 uh hopefully but uh, i don't think i will um yeah like i said i just got some things to patch up on my defense team and we'll, we'll see how that goes uh so that's that